Hey y'all, thanks for coming back and watching my channel. Today I'm going to talk to y'all a little bit about Aptasia. As you can see, I have quite a bit of it in my tank. There's quite a few things that people do to try and deal with Aptasia. I think I've tried them all and pretty much all but one technique has been unsuccessful for me. The first thing I tried was peppermint shrimp. I tried one, it was eating my blastos. I took it back. I made sure I got the right peppermint shrimp because I have been told over and over and over again that you probably have a camel shrimp, not a peppermint shrimp. I did everything in my power to make sure that it was a peppermint shrimp, the same markings and the same and anatomical structure that you expect to see on a peppermint shrimp. I know for certain that the last two shrimp that I tried were 100% peppermint shrimp. They still ate my corals. They ate my Aptasia too, but they also ate my corals. I also tried file fish. I had two different file fish. One of them died pretty quickly because he was getting bullied, but he was still picking at corals. Not terribly, but he was picking at them a little bit. My second one had no problems in the tank. Everybody seemed to like him, and he seemed to really enjoy the Favias. I had quite a Favia collection before I put him in, and overnight he ate every favia in my tank, every acan, little bits and pieces of acans left, and most of them completely died. There, there was just no recovery. So I put him in the sump and took him back to the fish store as quickly as possible. So needless to say, I'm a little jaded when it comes to animals in my fish tank eating Aptasia because I've just not had good luck. So after being pretty frustrated with the Aptasia in my tank and not being able to get rid of it, I was told about this little organism called a Bergia nudibranch. I'm probably saying it wrong. Again, most of my pronunciation comes from reading. If I'm saying it wrong, please feel free to correct me. I want to say it right. But I was told about Bergia nudibranch and someone near me named Cameron Hall actually breeds them. So I was able to get a couple from him, um, I think about 10 total, and put them in my tank back in February of this year, right before COVID struck. And I did not see a single Aptasia in my tank for months after they did their job. Around the end of July, August, I was starting to see some pop up. Cameron didn't have any available. I was trying to hold out till he had some that he could sell and started dosing with Aptasia X. And you can see in some of these videos where I have the Aptasia X, um, what it looked like right before I started using it. A lot of people say that Aptasia X causes the Aptasia to actually put out spores or however they reproduce and you end up with more. I had not experienced that when I used Aptasia X in my smaller tank, but in this tank you can definitely see a difference in the amount of Aptasia I had before and after I started using the Aptasia X. So it occurs to me that I have not actually told you all what Aptasia is. If you know what it is, then you're looking at this video and you see it everywhere. If you don't know what Aptasia is, you may be a little confused. So I will drop a picture in right now of a large Aptasia I have in the back corner of my tank. This is one of the biggest ones in the tank. It's probably about an inch across. An Aptasia is a nuisance and enemy. Um, this is what they look like if you have any of these in your tank and your corals aren't looking very happy it's very likely that these are stinging them so when we come back to this video of the tank you can see all those Aptasias just a quick count I see one two three four five six seven eight nine just quickly looking there's probably more there. 
my zoas are not happy. They're all closed up. The Ganapora, if you can see at the top, is quite shrunken. I have an acan on the other side of the tank. This acan has been getting stung by the Aptasia that is right there on the skeleton. It was nice, big, and poofy at one point, but as you can see, there's not a whole lot of flesh left. So by the time I have this video posted, I will have already put the Berkia Nudibranx into the tank. I ended up buying some off of Salty Underground and they look very nice. I'm very happy about it. They've already been eating some of the Aptasia, so I will keep a track of how much they have ate, where they have ate it, and share with you guys so that y'all have an idea of about how much time has gone by. So this next video I actually took before I put the Bergia Nudibranx in. You can see some of the Aptasia up on the top of the rock. So that's going to be the first Aptasia that we are going to try and track over the next couple of weeks. As you can see, there are two right there. They're not super big, but they aren't tiny either. They are in between the golden eye mummy, and I think that's a cherry um, Aussie Lord. So we'll track that one and see how long it takes for the Bergia Nudibranx to get over there. So the next Septasia that we're going to look at specifically are the ones that are right around all of these Zoas. So the first ones we're going to look at is the ones down on the bottom left, right next to the Bejeweled Pavides. There's about three in there. There are a few inside of that small Lich King Zoa frags. There's some back on my barnacles. You can see a Zoa on the Ganaporum, zooming in on it right here for you. It's very unhappy right here. It was happier earlier in the video. There was probably a fish that swam by. You can see that um, they're just finding little nooks and crannies and making themselves a home. If you look further back, there's an Aptasia back there. Again, the Aptasia's in between the Zoas. Back on the barnacles. Living their best life, I guess. Hopefully not for long. And here I just took a picture of the Aptasia that's in between the Lich King Zoas. The Aptasia has definitely stunted its growth. It was growing a lot faster before the Aptasia took root in between all of the polyps and the second picture is just of the Aptasia back on the barnacles. The Lich King Zoas are the blue Zoas there on the middle of the rock. At some point I turned the rock with the yellow, the scrambled egg Zoas and there's actually a lot more of those blue Lich King Zoas on the rock with the yellow Zoas. You just can't see it from this angle. So next I'm just going to do a pan of the tank. This pan I actually did a few weeks before I ordered the Bergia Nudibranx. I could tell that the Aptasia was starting to get a little out of control. It's kind of hard to see it in this video something about the blue light um, doesn't seem to pick up the Aptasia very well but if you look hard you can see where they are if you remember where they were from previously in this video you can see them they're definitely not as big as they are um, a few weeks later which is what you're looking at earlier in this video I was treating them <clears throat> with the Aptasia X at this point, and it was kind of keeping them in control. 
they were not angry and reproducing everywhere yet. So after this video clip is done, I will go back to the video of the tank and put it on a faster speed just because I think it's kind of interesting to see what all the animals are doing. Again, thank you very much for watching. This is B. Lee from Reef to Reef, Be the Fountain on Instagram. Feel free to follow me. Like the video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you can see new videos as they come out. I appreciate all the support that I'm getting and happy reefing!